Good afternoon again. It worked so well yesterday, I come back out here today to do another review out here. This time I'm going to do 1789 Evan Williams bourbon. Uh, Evan Williams 1783, that's supposedly when they started distilling. We've talked a little bit about Evan Williams before in my previous review, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. This is the third up their chain in my book. I've still got the bottled and bond, and then I've got seven Evan Williams uh, single barrels to do yet. And I've got both of those bottles in there, and I will get to them. The 1783, I've did the green label, the black label. This was the next in the progression I decided to do. Evan Williams, of course, is considered one of the older distilleries. Started distilling in quote unquote 1783, but if you really look on their website, you won't find much past the 1930s, 40s on them. 1946, I think, is what I got on one of the previous ones. And uh, Ron kind of corrected me, uh, uh, Ron Therio. If I'm mispronouncing your name, forgive me. Uh, uh, about, I think he said 1936 is where he found it, or 1937, somewhere in there. Anyway, but Evan Williams is, is, is a good product. I, I like the green. It's not my favorite, but the green and the black is, I actually, the black is a step up from the green, but the green has such a distinctive different flavor than the black. And in some ways it holds its own because of the charcoal filtering that they don't do on the black. The black's a little older, it's but another year older, technically. But the green, the green isn't bad. It's just not. You get what you pay for. If you want to, I'm not going to, go back and watch the green video. That's the best way to understand what I'm talking about. Watch the green video and go buy yourself a bottle of green and a bottle of black. You can get them both in the half pints or the pints and tire them for yourself and let me know what you think and see if you agree with what I did. Just leave a comment. Anyway, back to this. I'm really, I don't know what about today. I'm really just running off the mouth. <laughs> anyway, got my Scotch Cast Dummies coin again today. Oh, good, thick, oily. I don't know how long it's been in the barrel. I can't tell you that. Uh, it's small, sour mash, small batch, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. 86 proof, 43% alcohol by volume. Uh, Kentucky's first distillery, excuse me, Evan Williams earned the title. Kentucky's first distiller in 1783 when he began distilling on the banks of the Ohio River. Today that pioneering heritage is honored in the crafting of this special bourbon. It is distilled in the highest quality using the same sour mash process and traditional recipe made popular by its namesake. After fully maturing, a limited number of barrels are then specially chosen and mingled to just the right taste, making it a true small batch bourbon. The result is a genuine classic, smooth, rich, and worthy of its name. Uh, Sarah Pilgrim off of uh, It's Bourbon Night, on several of the blind reviews, she has actually chose this one. Picked it above others in her flight. So I think she, she surprised herself. The, the impression I get was she had surprised herself. But uh, she seems to, seems to match her flavor profile. It is very oily stuff. We're getting caramel. A little nutmeg. A little floral character to it. Vanilla. Caramel, nutmeg, and vanilla, pretty much. And I know that's a common flavor profile for bourbons. The floralness, it, it does have a distinct floralness in there. And I've noticed it as I'm drinking this bottle. 
on several of my bourbon for breakfast photos I do on Instagram. <clears throat> I tried different bourbons for breakfast. I forget, it's been a while, what I matched this up with. But that morning, this really worked real well with the uh, choice of my breakfast that morning. All right, let's dig in. finish is really good. I might bit floral. I don't care for the floral aspect of it. But the finish is really good. Even even with the floral even with that floral aspect. Caramel's changing to butterscotch. You still have the vanilla. You can get a little of the barrel char in there. It's got a little bit of the barrel char present. Get the vanilla, the barrel char is present. The spiciness dies off and the spiciness becomes a floral character. The floral character is amplified. Now, personally, I don't care for the floral character, but it's not the floral character is not, it's not overly detractive from the overall experience. Uh, I can tolerate the floral character because the finish is so good. The finish stays with you back in here very well. Uh, <clears throat> it's a good even tempered bourbon. I mean, we're not talking complicated here. Mostly butterscotch and a floral character in the flavor. There's just a little bit of heat that comes back up through the nose. But it's, it's not the kind of heat that takes and rips your nose off. It just comes back up through the back of your nose a little bit on your breath. It doesn't, it's not unappealing in any way. There may be people with lighter palates that might go out and find it offensive, but to a guy who's drank bourbon for a while, it's not gonna be offensive at all. It does retain just a little bit of that corniness in the finish. You'd get a little of the corn in the finish. Oh, well, it's good bourbon. I understand why she likes it. I would prefer the floral carrot notes dialed down just a hair for, for me personally. But I would have no qualms if this was sitting on a shelf for the price. This was 19 bucks, I think. If I remember correctly, I only paid 19 bucks for it. For the price, it's unbeatable. I mean, it's a good bourbon for 19 bucks. It's a solid buy. You can sit, sip, and enjoy. I give this one I give it 85 out of 100 I think that's more than a fair score for this one it's very good that being said everybody uh, remember the spirit in your glass is not running from you take your time sip it enjoy it you'll be better for it uh, have a great day <laughs>